Today in this lecture we are going to discuss volume loading hypertension in patients on dialysis or patients having no kidneys and they are dependent on artificial kidneys or dialysis. So we have discussed the role of kidney in long term regulation of arterial pressure and we have discussed different topics. Now we have established the two most important determinants of regulating the arterial pressure are the renal function the renal functions or the functions of the kidneys in the intake of salt and water and the point at which these two curves meet that is known as the equilibrium point uh, at the, the point at which these two things are equal the intake of salt and water is equal to the excretion of extra fluid through kidneys that point is known as equilibrium point and if either the intake of the salt and water is increased then the equilibrium point will shift and the arterial pressure will increase or if the the uh, the renal functions or the kidneys perform poorly or there are no functional kidneys then the shift will uh, the curve will shift towards the right and still the arterial pressure will move towards new points depending upon the level of salt and water now if the patient is having no kidneys no functional kidneys and is dependent on artificial kidneys or on dialysis then it is important to regulate the amount of salt and water salt and water if the amount of salt and water keep on increasing if the amount of salt and water keeps on increasing in patients with no functional kidneys and if the amount of salt and water is not properly regulated with the help of artificial kidneys or dialysis then volume loading hypertension will occur in these patients and the sequence the sequence of volume loading hypertension in these patients will be equal will be exactly the same as we discussed previously initially there will be accumulation of extracellular fluid volume the amount of uh, fluid the extracellular fluid will start increasing then the blood volume will increase the blood volume will starts increasing then the cardiac output will increase the cardiac output has started increasing here then after some time initially the total peripheral resistance will decrease initially the total peripheral resistance will decrease but the arterial pressure will increase at this point the point at which extracellular fluid volume the point at which blood volume the point at which cardiac output increase started increasing at that exact point the arterial pressure will start increasing but arti but total peripheral resistance initially will decrease due to baroreceptors then with the passage of time the extracellular fluid volume and the blood volume will decrease with the help of kidneys or urine formation if the kidneys are not functional if the kidneys are not functional in this case the urine formation the urine formation or the the removal of the waste material will be properly dependent on the dialysis so once there is loading of salt and water then even if this uh, extra volume is removed what will happen uh, how the volume loading hypertension will occur we are dis basically discussing that so initially if the the water and salt is allowed to accumulate or there is increase in the amount of salt and water in patients with no kidneys on dialysis so initially these things increase increase the extracellular fluid volume will increase the blood volume will increase the cardiac output will increase and this will eventually lead to increase in the total peripheral resistance finally if the 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 when the extracellular fluid volume decrease with the help of increase uh, increased dialysis in this case because there are no kidneys and the blood volume also de uh, is decreased it will basically decrease the tot the total cardiac output but the peripheral resistance the peripheral resistance will remain elevated 
the peripheral resistance will remain elevated and then in this case it will be the cause of arterial pressure. So the sequence of development of volume loading hypertension is the same in patients with no kidneys because here the volume is loaded and the hypertension is basically due to excess volume. So volume loading hypertension is due to the excess fluid volume which leads to hypertension and in this case there are no functional kidneys so basically the renal function curve is basically shift, uh, shifted toward the right side and it has led to the increase in arterial pressure but the sequence of increase in arterial pressure is that initially there is accumulation and this volume loading hypertension will occur only only if there is accumulation of salt and water if there is no proper removal if there is no proper removal of excess salt and water only then these things will occur only then extracellular fluid volume will accumulate blood volume will increase cardiac output will increase and it will increase the arterial pressure but eventually these things will go down eventually it will uh, these things will go down the blood volume the extracellular fluid volume will come down with the help of uh, urine formation or removal with the help of dialysis and cardiac output will decrease with the help of autoregulation which we have discussed in the last lecture but the total but the arterial pressure will increase due to eventual increase in the total peripheral resistance so the sequence of volume loading hypertension in patients dependent on dialysis or patients having no kidneys no functional kidneys is the same as we previously discussed the sequence of volume loading hypertension the normal sequence so that's all about volume loading hypertension in patients on dialysis thanks a lot for watching the video